Hello guys, welcome to lecture 5 of BF208. Today we're going to be talking about cultural ethics and international businesses in the global economy. This is a very straightforward headline. So as you understand, the topic that I'm going to analyze today, uh, it's going to be uh, ethics in culture and things to take and bring into consideration for a business if it wants to expand abroad. Um, I've created a PowerPoint slide presentation uh, consisted of 24, 25, I think, uh, uh, PowerPoint slides. So please read it through. Uh, it has major key points of the whole uh, aspect of uh, expanding internationally. And please follow the link that I've uploaded as well in the Moodle on, on the Lecture 5 is, uh, Lecture, lecture 5 point there, which is uh, under uh, the first uh, video that I uploaded from YouTube. Um, see both videos, okay? And uh, should you have any questions, please send me an email. Uh, to begin with, international business ethics, okay, is an even changing landscape, I would say, of cultural differences versus good business practices your company or a company needs to have in place to function and thrive in, in, in other countries. So moving from one country to another, this correlation versus ethic and practices, business practices, need to go in the same pot and smooth, simple, and obey some written and unwritten rules. Uh, the problem facing businesses that step onto the global business stage, the major problem is, is to follow the ethics. Uh, because it can be different depending on cultural transition and history in other countries. <clears throat> so, what is acceptable in the States might not be okay in China or in Kuwait or uh, in, in Asia. Okay, so uh, make a handshake with a business associate or a business partner in most European countries, it's accept acceptable and a formal way, okay, to salute someone. But having a handshake with somebody in the Middle East, okay, especially if this somebody is a woman, is not okay. So you need to bring this into consideration when developing every single step of the, your business that you will take it about. Um, to give you an example, a good example, uh, is the issue actually of giving and receiving gifts from clients and prospective customers. In Asian countries, giving gifts to customers, it's part of the culture. A company might want to establish guidelines for what is acceptable and set a value amount of, for such gifts. As a business owner, it is your responsibility to set the standards by which your business operates and to make sure the company complies with for instance, United States law or, or overseas, because your company offices still must follow either American laws or European laws. It depends from where your company is based and where, where your company wants to go. Um, to help you address okay, differences in international business ethics, I will give you six things 
each business owner needs to know for going for doing business in a global in a global country, you know, in a, or in a global economy. These six uh, points that I'm going to analyze further down to you, I consider to be the most important ones. First of all, know the laws. Very, very important. The Foreign Corrupt Practices Act of 1977 banned businesses and anyone representing businesses from paying foreign government officials, bribing and get new businesses or keep current business. Businesses also have to comply with the accounting provisions of the Act and, and their books need to accurately reflect their business transactions. Okay. Second one uh, is to follow international business guidelines. Besides the federal laws, okay, businesses can agree to follow international guide guidelines set up by organization for economic cooperation and development. A multinational think tank that addresses global business issues. The, the Organization for Economic Cooperation, okay, the guidelines used performed by 42 countries suggested standards to follow, including how to handle employment concerns, okay, industrial relations, human rights, competition, environmental concerns, and information disclosure. Number three, develop a unified strategy. Unified, okay? Pay attention to the word. To best navigate the cultural difference when doing business overseas, the best practices consulting a firm recommended establishing a unified co corporate strategy that can be adopted at each of your business's locations, be at the company headquarters or a branch office in another country. The strategy should include a code of contact, okay, clearly detailing the company's fundamental guideline guiding principles, principles for worker contact and decisions. Uh, this is also recommended in allowing international company units to add the code of contact with local policies that reflect the region or country in which it does business. Number four, communicate clearly and understand the differences not only in-house but intercultural communications that is a must if your business is going to establish a foothold in a, in a different country. Uh, the businesses that succeed uh, are the ones that embrace the culture while maintaining their unique company identity and values. Knowing the culture is essential, of course, but particularly in business negotiations, as Muhammad Ifran, an executive director of the business consulting firm says, uh, especially in the Middle East, as I, as I told you, in order to move a company from the States or from Europe or from Asia to Middle East, uh, this transition has the, the highest risks and the more points to bring into consideration uh, in order to secure uh, not 100% your success, but uh, at least to increase the possibility to succeed in these foreign countries uh, the maximum. Okay. Arabs in particular will use metaphors and speak in vague terms when working on deals. You understand that? It's something that you won't face it uh, in Europe or at least in a high level because Arabs, it's in their culture 
to use metaphors and speak in vague terms. This might lead to discommunication or to inappropriate behaviors that you will think it is. But at the end of the day, this is the culture and this is how Arabs talk. This is not a calculated effort to irritate you, however, but rather a method of a dialogue that allows for communicating ideas without causing anyone else around the table to lose face. Okay, uh, Arabs may not ask for clarification for fear of losing face. Okay, so it's up to you to make sure every angle is covered. Nobody will sign a deal. They don't fully understand. Okay, nobody. Number five, according to my list, which I consider to be very, very important when broadcasting and moving businesses abroad, put the company guidelines into practice. Once your business has its values and code of contact in place, the next step is to ensure the implementation of those policies. Each employee should learn the guidelines and understand what is expected of them and how to conduct themselves as workers for the company. Okay. Uh, and number six, which is in my priority list, assess and acknowledge differences. Pay attention, please. Assess and acknowledge differences. Without compromising the company's core values, it is possible to embrace certain cultural differences as long as okay, those actions aren't against the law in the, in the States or in Europe. In some countries, uh, bribes are allowed and are tax deductible as a business expense according to the Justice Department in some countries. The states and the other countries that have signed these guidelines have pledged not give bribes. So other differences are more subtle and should be evaluated on a case-by-case on -case basis. Okay. Uh, to understand in general the influence of culture of business ethics, it is essential to understand the concepts and acculturation. Acculturation. In its most basic sense, okay, it refers to the processes by which uh, humans learn their rules, custom skills, and values to participate in a society. So, in other words, to embrace myself, no one is born with culture. No one. All humans, humans regardless of their origin, no matter to which country they belong, okay, have to learn what is considered appropriate and especially behavior-wise, so in, in their surroundings area. Um, one of the earliest, earliest in, in the last two years, real estate deals, deals in the world, uh, the complexity in general amplifies that the results when different cultures and experiences are ethical and codes come into contact. This is the result for making a deal. I will repeat myself. Different cultures, experiences and ethical codes come into contact. So there is no need of sale remains. This difficult to tell exactly what happened when making this deal they just brought together and they combined these ethical codes and the experiences with their different cultures. So, um, there is one island in, uh, in the States that is worth 24 uh, billion dollars. And a Chinese and a Dutch, okay, real estate agents, I will give you this example, were about to sell it to a, a guy from China. 
Okay, so they were trying to cooperate and uh, evaluate all these difficulties culture-wise they might have on the, on the meeting. So, they conclude that their point of view was different and their angle that they were seeing differences in Asian culture was different and to cooperate together to make the deal will have a lot of chances to collapse. Okay, so what they have decided to do, and this was something really clever, was to write down all these things that they both believed that should be addressed and behave in the meeting, comparing the, um, not comparing, should be addressed and meet in the meeting according to show, according to Asian cultures in order to show respect and make sure that the deal will be successfully closed. Because you understand the commission out of a sale of 24 billion. So, uh, the, the, the Dutch and the other guy, the, the state guy, they conclude to the point that they said, okay, we agree how to treat this guy, but we disagree, okay, how to behave. And because we cannot pretend that we are Asians and we follow every guideline that should be addressed in two meetings between Asians. So one of them stepped out, okay, he gave a full credit to the other one, the Dutch especially, and the meeting was closed because the Dutch and the American guy did not agree or they didn't have the same even body language, okay, so they, they thought that once is better as long as it's uh, prepared to follow some codes, unwritten codes, regarding uh, the Asian mentality. So, um, the growth today of global competition affects nearly every company, <coughs> regardless of size. So, many source suppliers for, from foreign countries and still more compete against product or services that originate abroad. International businesses remains a broad concept that they contrast the smallest companies that they may only export or import with other countries, as well as the largest global firms with integrated operations and strategic alliances uh, around the globe. <coughs> I want you to understand the meaning of it and follow page 17 and 16 on the PowerPoint slides. Because I have an analyzation there that and some links that it will redirect you to some other formats of this competitive environment and the cultural environment, the political, all, all this pastel that we were well, you should know in, in, in general about the the political and environmental and sociological and technological factors that they come into consideration of making businesses abroad. So please uh, have a look at the lecture slides, it's very important. Have a look at the video link that I'm showing you and I'll upload it online to see uh, a small film regarding what you need to bring into consideration when making businesses abroad. And please, should you have any questions regarding the lecture, send me an email, allow me 24 hours to reply back to you uh, and if you are not happy with the answer you will get, you can, we can discuss it further. Thank you so much uh, for watching.